A video game movie in the modern age has one job, to remind you why you loved a series. To just give you a fresh way to fall in love with your favorite series again. My other two favorite game franchises, Sonic and Mario, both got movies within the last five years, and they both gave me that feeling very thoroughly. And though the FNAF movie was expected to come out more towards the beginning of my love for FNAF, with how I was a fan since 2014 and it was announced in 2015, but here we are, 2023, and the movie has just released. Did it live up to the expectations of being a movie that I waited eight years for? Yeah. Okay, I know that sounds bad, but I'm not gonna go as far to say I didn't like it. I, in fact, did like it. I loved it, even. But, man, this movie's runtime did it so dirty. And I guess it should be considered a good thing that all I really wanted coming out of this movie was more. But there was, like, stuff in promo material that literally just never shows up in the actual movie. But then there was also so much stuff that showed up in the actual movie that was not even touched upon in promo material. So it's not quite like I got less than I was expecting, but I also was left very confused by the stuff that was cut out. Because I feel like this movie was definitely trimmed down pretty severely for the theatrical release. I do hope the extended cut gets released eventually. But as the movie is right now, it definitely feels like it should have been longer. But without further ado, let's just talk about Five Nights at Freddy's. But first, let's do a little introduction here. Alright, so let's lay some ground rules for this review. So, first section, I'm going to divide this video into chapters. The first chapter is going to be entirely spoiler-free, and then the second chapter, I am going to go as spoiler-heavy as possible. So, if you want to avoid spoilers, don't watch past the first chapter. If you don't care, or I've already seen the movie, watch past the first chapter. Alright, is that clear? Alright, let's get into it. So, for a 100% honest, a non-spoiler review, I'll have to say, the movie is not perfect. Which, I don't think many movies are, but this movie is just kind of like... A lot of baffling decisions, but it is very on-brand for Scott Cawthon, so I can't really blame the movie for it. This movie is everything I love about Five Nights at Freddy's and more. You can just tell that this movie was put together with so much love and care for the series, and it's really something special. I do really love all the characters, although some of them, particularly William Afton, I would really wish had a lot more screen time, cause he really feels like he was underutilized. And I really get into the reasons why, you'll have to watch the movie to find that out, but yeah, I don't know, it's just kind of meh how they implemented him. I love him as a character, like the way he's portrayed by Matthew Lillard is fantastic, but it's just so disappointing how little he actually shows up in the movie. But I did find Mike and Abby as very compelling characters, and Vanessa is interesting too. I also love the main four animatronics, they're all lovely. The reason why I make such a big point earlier about how I wish the movie was longer is because like, there are some other characters that I'm not going to go into detail on, but like, there are some other characters who should have gotten a lot more focus than they did, but are just kind of left not elaborated on. But I feel like the positives outweigh the negatives in terms of this movie. I really, really enjoyed it. It was such a, it's such a fun movie. Like, it's not like a masterpiece by any means, which I wasn't expecting it to be, but it's such a fun movie. It's got just the right amount of funny moments, it's got just the right amount of scary moments. Do not let that PG-13 rating fool you, because this movie does get pretty graphic at parts, particularly with a character who you might have noticed in the trailer gets his face mauled by a cupcake. This movie did not feel afraid to hold back on blood and such, which I'm really glad it didn't. I wasn't hoping for a gore fest from a FNAF movie, because that's never been what the series is about, but I think it's cool that they weren't worried to show a bit of blood. And just like any piece of FNAF media, this movie sure does have a lot of mysteries to solve and lore to solve. This movie is like really obvious that it's written by Scott Cawthon. Like you can really tell that this is like the most Scott Cawthon movie ever. Just in terms of writing, it is very much his style, which is what I was expecting. And yeah, it definitely shines through all of the positives and negatives of Scott Cawthon's writing, but I really, really enjoyed it either way. 
this movie was just what I love about this series. The mystery, the spookiness, the goofiness, the campiness. Everything is here and wrapped in a nice little bow, and it's just really nice to see. So yeah, I suppose it is time for the spoiler review. So um, yeah, if you want to avoid spoilers, click off the video now. So, plot in the movie, Mike likes to sleep. Okay, well, pretty simplified plot there, but I really like the plot here. It's not what I it was expecting quite, because the trailers didn't really touch on this much, but the main plot of the movie is that Mike has these dreams every night of the time when his brother got kidnapped and he never saw him again. And Mike likes this theory where you remember everything you've ever seen, you just have to look hard enough for it. So every night when he sleeps, he goes back to this memory and tries to remember who kidnapped his brother to try to find him. And his trauma is so bad that he beats up a father because he was scrapping his son. It's really funny, this movie has a lot of like really like out of pocket moments, like he just like tackles this guy that he doesn't even know if it's a kidnapper or not, he doesn't like um, try to ask anything or he literally just like tackles him without saying a word. But um, I thought the little plot about Mike like wanting to find out who, who kidnapped his brother, it was a pretty good like motivation for the main character. I thought it was nice. But Mike's gotta take care of his little sister Abby, who is communicating with ghosts, but he just thinks it's like an imaginary friend. She's drawing all these pictures and stuff, and she's just very like distracted at school. And he's fighting a legal battle with his Aunt Jane to keep custody of his little sister. And can I just say, Aunt Jane is a terrible character not just like not like the acting the acting is very like it's it sells that you're supposed to hate her because i really do hate her it's clearly the point but man she sucks i also really like this like visibly uncomfortable lawyer that follows her around like he is awesome i i, he, I did not know this character was in the movie at all but he is just like really funny to me because like he clearly does not want to be here <laughs> Oh yeah, opening of the movie. I forgot, I just didn't even talk about the opening of the movie. The opening of the movie was really good. Um, it introduces you to this, like, night guard who was the night guard before Mike, and he's, like, fighting for his life. He's just, like, terrified. He's calling to the vents and stuff. And then he ends up trapped in the weird, like, Freddy stuff suit machine, and then he dies. But, like, this was a really cool way to introduce the movie and, like, just show, like, these animatronics are scary. I don't know if this machine has an official name, but this, like, weird, like, Freddy Saw Trap machine is such a cool design. Like, the way it, like, um, straps you down to the thing, and then, like, it has, like, pupils inside of the mask that, like, dilate and look at you as it, the saw blades come closer, and that is just, like, a really cool concept. It's, like, is this thing alive or something? It's really, like, weird how it, like, dilates its pupils and stares at the person it's about to shred, but, yeah, it's, it's really cool. I like it. And then there's this really cool, like, opening credits sequence where there's, like, um, 8-bit minigames portraying what happened to the kids and stuff. Kind of weird to show that at the beginning, because it's kind of a mystery throughout the movie, I guess. Not really for fans, but, like, for general audiences. But it's still cool to see. This was a really cool part sequence, and the music is awesome. William Afton is going under a fake name, Steve Raglan, and he is a career counselor. Um, and he, and he just, just so happens to get Mike as his next client. I like the detail that he has a participation award on his wall. So William recognizes Mike. I'm not really sure what it's implied here. I guess he's just getting a closer look because he like recognizes him from back when he did that kidnapping. But I don't really know because it says his name is Mike Schmidt and he seems to recognize that name. I don't know. I don't think Mike and Michael Afton are the same person in this universe or if Michael Afton even exists in this universe. But I think it's really interesting that William just kind of takes this weird glance at Mike at one point. Then William's like, oh, your options are very limited, but I have a job for you. And then Mike is like, oh, I can't, I can't work nights. I'm Mike, I'm Mike. So then right before Mike is about to leave, William hands him a little thing and is like, hey, come back um, if you change your mind. And then Mike eventually does change his mind, obviously, because otherwise it would be a really short movie. And then finally... After 18 minutes of the movie, Mike is finally getting his job at Freddy's, which I mean, 18 minutes of introduction isn't really that much when you really think about it, but it kind of felt a little bit long for them to actually get to Freddy's, but also it wasn't really that bad, because at least it was shorter than the previews last Like seriously, why are the trailers before the movie starts so damn long? Like, if you're gonna tell me the movie starts at 5pm, start the movie at 5pm. 
Like, is there an actual reason why there has to be 30 minutes of previews? So anyway, Mike watches the training tape, which is the same one they released through the, like, Freddy Fazer's Pizza phone number, so it wasn't really anything new, but it was cool seeing it in a different context, I guess. And then Mike falls asleep at the pizzeria, and when he falls asleep at the pizzeria, the ghost kids end up talking to him in his dream. Well, they don't talk to him yet, they just kind of stand there in the first night, but they're contacting him through his dreams somehow, and it's, it's not explained later. This is just a thing ghosts can do, I guess. And then Jane and her lawyer and her, um, two, like, I don't even know what their relation to her is. I think they're, like, I, I honestly have no idea. But Mike's babysitter is basically only hiring at, but with Mike to just, like, get evidence of Mike being a bad parent, but she's not getting any, and Jane is mad at that. Matt Pat shows up, which is really funny. I was, I was just, like... I wasn't expecting him to show up in the movie. I'm pretty sure he, like, said he wasn't in the movie. I, he, I guess he was just lying. But this is, like, this was really funny to see. Because this exact scene, too, is the first teaser that the movie ever got. So just, I, like, I, I'm just thinking about the fact that MatPat was just, like, right off screen in that shot that they showed. And that is really funny. I liked how they handled the MatPat cameo. I was kind of hoping that he wasn't in the movie just because I didn't think that the cameo would work well. I thought they'd like go for something really corny like he's a conspiracy theorist or something. But no, he's just a freaking like diner like waiter and that's really funny and he's like, they also work as just a theory and, and it works really, it, it just works really well. I like it. But they come up with this plan to basically just break into the pizzeria and wreck everything, which I think was a pretty creative way. I was honestly expecting the people breaking into the pizzeria to be like the opening and then that would be why they need a security guard but no they had security guards beforehand they're just trying to get mike to look bad so like these are not just like regular robbers they are literally out against mike but that night during mike's dream he actually gets hit by foxy with his hook like in his sleep which is really like interesting and they show a lot of blood there which i was wasn't expecting but it's cool like I said earlier, I think it's a good thing that they're not will they're trying to like shy away from that like they were when they made Security Breach. But yeah, Vanessa shows up for some reason and then Mike's like, oh yeah, I am bleeding. Thanks for telling me. But then Vanessa tells Mike like, yeah, you're probably going to quit eventually. Most guards do, which is just her way of saying they die, but you know. And then Vanessa pushes the showtime button and then all the animatronics start performing and it's very cool to see. The the puppeteering on the animatronics just look very good here. I don't know if they're actually animatronics here or if they're being manually controlled. They're probably a mix of both, but either way, they look really, really good here when they're performing. And um, Vanessa briefly mentions like the kids going missing, then Mike asks about that, and then she's like, Yup, kids went missing back in the 80s. That's why the place shut down. And now in this next scene, um, the robbers are about to break into the pizzeria to wreck the place and make Mike look bad because he left the door unlocked. And I think this particular scene is when the animatronics are at their most, like, aggressive and violent in the movie. Because, like, they kill off this entire group of robbers one by one, and it's a really cool sequence. I think the most violent kill in this whole movie is done by the cupcake. Not necessarily in terms of, like, damage, because, like, the girl gets cut in half later on, but, like... This dude's face gets mutilated by the cupcake, and I'm not really gonna show the picture of it happening in the movie, but like, man, they show it They show it later, and I'm surprised they got away with that with PG-13, because this is nasty. But sadly, Hank is next. Hashtag active Hank. We love Hank. Do not be related to what you If that's the case, it's game. Then we see the most convincing acting in the whole movie. Seriously, bring this character back. If the next movie's a prequel if he and he's not in it, I'm gonna be mad. But yeah, as we see in like literally every TV spot, Hank gets killed by Bonnie in the supply closet. Which is unfortunate because man, I, I, I really didn't want- I really went into this movie, I, wa I wanted Hank to survive. He was the only character I cared about surviving. Mike could've died, Vanessa could've died, I wouldn't care, okay? It's all about Hank. And he died. Foxy does an, his iconic hallway run, and it's even completed with a FNAF 1 jump scare noise, which was really nice to hear. The shot of Foxy, like, walking looks, like, insanely good. Like, the puppetry in this movie is crazy. And then when the next shot, we get freaking this. I'm not even gonna question how this is possible. Not even gonna question it, because I know they didn't think that hard about it. They just did it because it looks cool, and it does look cool, but man, I don't think, I don't think 
in an, the entire upper half of a person's body could fit inside of Freddy Fazbear's mouth. So, like, blah, 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 Mike lore dumps to Vanessa. This is kind of the most boring part of the movie, to be honest. Like, don't get me wrong, I love these characters, but I want to see Freddy Fazbear. So, Mike takes Abby to work tonight because he can't find this babysitter because she got chopped in half. And then second Balloon Boy jump scare of the movie, I don't think I mentioned Balloon Boy yet. He's in the movie. He's really tiny for some reason, and his design is really funny. I really, really like this Balloon Boy design. But Mike cleans up the place after the robbers break in, you know, try to make himself look a bit better. Like, yeah, he's taking care of the place. So after another dream sequence where Mike negotiates with a kid, he finds Abby being tickled by the animatronics and he thinks she's dying because she's screaming but no she's just being like tickled by them they're playing with her and you know mike is understandably confused he doesn't know why these animatronics are sentient so um yeah and you know abby introduces them all to mike and says that he's her brother so they decide not to hurt him and i like how this kind of establishes that like yeah the animatronics are just kids at their core and they aren't gonna be like outwardly evil and killing towards other kids. So they befriend Abby because they haven't seen another kid in probably a very, very long time. The next morning after they go home, Mike asks Abby about it and she just straight up tells him, yeah, they're ghosts, they're possessed by ghosts. Um, she just like knows this, she's been talking to them for a while now and he notices that in Abby's drawings, they're, she like directly draws herself with the ghosts. So yeah, they are not hiding the fact that they are possessed by ghosts at all in this movie. Since his Mike is extremely desperate to find out who killed it, who killed his brother, he tells Abby to ask the animatronics if they know who like kidnapped his brother. And all she says right now is that it was the yellow rabbit. And I honestly wish there was more stuff like this to build up to William Afton appearing, because it feels like the yellow rabbit thing was kind of underutilized. Especially Matt William Afton as a whole was underutilized, but I feel like at least if there was at least more build up to him it would have had more of an impact when he actually showed up but it, there's not really quite a lot so then um vanessa becomes open high make vanessa and abby build a fort together with the animatronics and this is honestly one of my favorite scenes in the movie i know a lot of people like cringed at this apparently but like i was just like smiling this is so goofy and i really like this side of fnaf and i think it was really really well done here um, it's just, like, really funny seeing them all just, like, building a fort, doing this really, like, childish thing, because all the animatronics. I like how this movie explores the fact that they are kids. And this scene is just, it's just fun. This is a really, really fun scene. The music and everything, I really, really enjoyed this. Now, I think the most baffling thing in this entire movie, like, genuinely, is the fact that the spare Springlock suit that they choose to use as an example of, like, how Springlocks work in the back room is of Ella from the novels like the doll that wasn't a, wasn't even an animatronic like what why I was just so like confused why it's Ella it's cool looking like yeah that's Ella but like why why this character of all things it doesn't even look like a person who fit inside like the arms and legs are way too small but anyway Mike is a bit questioning of Vanessa and then she tells him um, I'm going to shoot you. Vanessa really doesn't want anything to happen to Abby, so she just, like, straight up threatens Mike, which is crazy. So then the kids give Mike what he wants, which is the good outcome of his dream, but then he realizes that it's wrong because the animatronics, what they want in return is Abby. So then in his sleep, all the animatronics individually attack Mike, and now, uh-oh, he's trapped in the Freddy torture machine, but he escapes just last second. But now comes the part of the movie that I'm kind of disappointed with. So Golden Freddy shows up at Abby's house um, to take her to the pizzeria. And he just kind of shows up, and he, he, he gets in the taxi like you see in the trailer. And then he never shows up again. Like, as in, he literally vanishes when they reach the doors to the pizzeria. Also, Aunt Jane just gets, like, killed and it's never touched upon. I think it's really funny. So Mike was taken to like a medical outpost by Vanessa to be treated for his wounds that the animatronics gave him. And this is when the big reveal happens that I Scott obviously did this because he wanted there to be a surprise in this movie that the fans would never predict. But Vanessa is William Afton's daughter in this universe. 
I don't think this has any implications of the game lore, and I don't want it to, so I'm just gonna say it does it. This is a completely separate thing that they did for the movie universe just to make it stand out more, because yeah, I was not expecting this. This is a really big surprise, and I honestly don't mind it. I think it works pretty well here. But here comes the big reveal of the Spring Bonnie costume, which you see the past version of it, which doesn't show up anywhere outside of this image, and neither does young Vanessa, and I feel like they didn't just cast an actor just to show him in a single image, so I feel like young Vanessa was probably going to be featured in a flashback scene of some sort that was cut, because there's also the fixed Foxy and stuff that so, was shown. So, shame that that was cut. I really hope we do see it someday, but at least we get this little image... And now Chica is luring Abby to the back room, and Mike has to save her. This is honestly one of my favorite scenes in the movie, um, probably like my third favorite, um, Mike having to sneak past the animatronics and like taking them all down. I really, really like how they executed that. Um, just like Freddie and Bonnie performing on stage and having to like pour the water and stuff and make a plan to sneak past them. It was cool. I actually think a FNAF game with a mechanic similar to this would be really, really nice. Chica tries to put Abby inside of the Ella Springlock suit, which I think is really interesting. Um, still don't know what's up with that thing, but I think it's interesting that was the suit that the animatronics chose for Abby. Or maybe it's just because they didn't have any of the other suits left because they already used all the other ones. But Mike shows up at the last second and tases Chica and takes down her. And I know a lot of people didn't really like them taking down the animatronics just because, oh, they go down so easily with just a taser, but... I guess it's accurate to the games. I mean, that's how they go down in FNAF AR, and I, 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 like, how that, I like that mechanic in that game. As much as that game kind of sucks, I think that the taser mechanic from that game is a really cool concept. It's in the cupcake, just then it starts gnawing on Mike's leg. Like, it doesn't tear, it tear up his leg it with this dude's face. It just kind of, like, starts gnawing on him, and it's really funny looking. But this leaves Abby by herself to deal with Foxy. In what I think is supposed to be like a recreation of the first scene from The Silver Eyes, which I honestly think is really cool. I like the foxy hunting you around the arcade machines is really, really awesome, and I'm really glad they decided to adapt that. Also reminds me a little bit of the L Chips arcade section in Security Breach, which also reminded me of The Silver Eyes. And then William Afton in the Spring Bonnie suit finally shows up. And it is easily the most memorable and cool part of the movie. I absolutely love the scene. Matthew Lillard is awesome. He's so, like, imposing, and he's got a really, really awesome voice. Like, he is strong, too. Like, this Spring Bonnie suit is durable. And I really, really think they missed out on making him, like, more of a presence in the movie. Like... If they this guy had more scenes, I can guarantee... If the whole movie was, like, th like this, I think that would be amazing. So, I'm really hoping to get a FNAF 3 movie. Because if we got a FNAF 3 movie, it would basically just be that, and that would be spectacular. The voice, like, the effects on the voice... I love the voice that the Spring Bonnie mask, like, gives William Afton. It sounds really, really cool. I'm really excited to see more of this character in, like, sequels and stuff. Because... He's easily the best part of the movie. I love this character. I really, really, really wish he got more screen time. I'll say that a billion times, but I really do. Just such a cool character, a cool design, a cool scene. It's all great. I love how the lighting turns green, too, when he shows up to, like, FNAF 3 reference. I love that. But then, William calls all of the animatronics to wake back up after being tased. And now, basically just to show how strong this suit is, William gets shot by Vanessa, and the spring locks don't even go off because of that. I was expecting the spring lock. I thought it was going to end that soon. I was like, what? But no, um, the spring locks do not go off because of that. The bullet actually seems to deflect off the suit, which makes no sense, but okay. But now we find out that the animatronics are influenced by William because of the drawings that portray their memories. William has altered them to show the yellow rabbit being friendly. So... Now Abby has to change the drawing to be evil Yellow Rabbit so the animatronics know that he's bad and that they should kill him. Vanessa tries to stop William from going after Abby, but she stabs her, so, um, ouch. And as soon as Abby changes the drawing, the building starts to shake and it's like it's, it's becoming alive and the building's like shaking and then it puts a spotlight right on the drawing to show the animatronics. So now that the animatronics have turned on him, he starts yelling at them, he's mad, and he's just, like, completely sh th taking off his nice persona that he puts on for them. So now the spring lock scene happens, and it's not, like, spewing blood out everywhere like it does in the 8-bit minigame, 
But I really like how they portrayed it here. Matthew Lillard, um, like, um, sells the pain pretty well, but also that William is just, like, so, like, insane and desensitized that, like, he sees this as, like, empowering. He puts back on his mask and he just, like, accepts it. He even says, I always come back, which had the theater cheering. And now the building is, like, really rumbling. The ceiling is, like, falling out. Freddy screams for some reason. And then, just like the Silver Eyes, the animatronics drag William Afton away, and that basically concludes the story. And, wow, this movie was pretty dang awesome. Um, I liked it a lot. I definitely have my problems with it, but the problems are minor compared to all the amazing things about this movie. Like, I love so many of the characters, the char the sets are awesome, the animatronics are spectacular. I 100% understand why a lot of casual moviegoers and critics don't like the movie. Because this movie is very specifically made for FNAF fans. It's meant to entertain FNAF fans and keep them thrilled with the FNAF universe. Jason Blum even said it himself. And this isn't even to say all critics and casual moviegoers hated the movie, because a lot of them did like it. But it's also clear that they didn't clearly understand everything that was in the movie, and I think that's just because it kind of assumes you're a FNAF fan going into it. Which I think is an inherent flaw of the movie. And while it doesn't bother me as a FNAF fan, I 1000% understand why it would bother somebody who doesn't know anything about the series and just like wanted to see a cool movie, and then they're just kind of left confused. And I'll go into the more of the end credits things probably in another video, because I want to talk about that for more of a predictions video for the sequel. But for now, that was my thoughts on Five Nights at Freddy's, and I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys liked the movie too. If you didn't like the movie, if you liked the movie, let me know in the comments what you thought about it, because I really want to hear other people's opinions, and I will see you guys in the next video.